Welcome back to the video series on the Play Framework using Scala. In the last video, we started working on a new application. It's going to be a simple chat app, but it's going to use WebSockets so that they can talk back and forth. And this allows the server to basically send back information anytime someone else chats. We had gotten to the point where we had set up our page. We have a page here. We have an application that serves that page. And we were starting to put in the code that in JavaScript that would actually open the WebSocket itself. Um, I've gotten hold of the two elements that are in our web page right now. How do we open a WebSocket? Well, let's make a variable called socket. Uh, WebSockets are part of the current JavaScript standard. So we should just be able to make a new WebSocket. And then we have to give it a route. Okay, and that route should be the location that we want to connect to. Okay. Now, that needs to be something that's in our routes file, and it can't be this page of HTML. It has to be something that actually produces a web socket for us. So, we need to add another route here, and we need to go through our little trick of putting it in a hidden field so we can easily get it into our JavaScript using reverse routing. So let's make a route for the chat socket. Controllers, WebSocket chat, uh, get socket, sure. Okay. Um, possibly just socket, following our naming convention. So we come to this app and we make a def socket equals, we'll leave that as a to do for a second. But since we have that route in there, we can come back to our page and we can add a hit, a, an input of type hidden. And give it an ID. And the ID I am going to call is WS route for the WebSocket route so that we know how we're going to get to it. And it has a value that is equal to the reverse routing. So routes dot WebSocket chat dot socket. Okay. Now it turns out that that will give us a relative URL because we're pulling this from a page that was served from us and that won't work for the WebSocket. So we are going to ask it to give us an absolute URL for that so that we have the whole thing. And I'm pretty sure that inputs don't need to have closes. And so then we could have a const socket route would be equal to document dot get element by ID of the WS route that we just created and get its value. That is not the Sometimes autocomplete writes things for you that you don't really want. Okay, so we can get the uh, value for that inside of our uh, chat. And there's one other thing that we need to do in here. Turns out this route is something that starts with HTTP. Okay. And when you open WebSockets, uh, we don't want something that starts with HTTP. We want something that starts with WS. So I'm going to take this string and I am going to replace the HTTP with WS. Okay, and so this will give us, instead of having a URL that is HTTP colon slash slash something, this will be WS colon slash slash something. And this should open the WebSocket. Okay, what happens if we 
refresh our page just to make sure that we have all the linkings in there and we didn't mess up anything with the routing. Indeed, this pulls in. And if we look at the page itself, we see that we have a hidden, uh, the value for the route is there. And I didn't get any errors when I opened that WebSocket. Then again, it went to a to-do. So I'm not certain exactly what that is looking like, because uh, clearly the to-do did not actually give us a WebSocket. So at this point, we have to figure out how do we get a WebSocket over here? What do we put under socket of, as an action that will actually give us back and create a WebSocket for us? Well, it turns out, just like everything else, we're going to start off or actually, no, we're not going to start off with an action. Whereas everything else we've done has started off with an action. In this case, we're going to start off with WebSocket, and it's a play uh, API MVC WebSocket. And if you've ever done socketing, uh, for example, in the on the JVM, you make these things called server sockets, and you accept connections. We do the same thing here. So we're going to accept, and we have to tell it the type of input and output. For our purposes, we're just going to send and receive strings here. And then we put in our function. And so a request doesn't need to be implicit in this situation. We make a request or we take our request and we have to make an actor from this. So as I mentioned before in the previous video, the WebSockets make use of Akka actors. Um, and we're actually going to use the actor flow, which is part of plays libraries. And we're going to ask it to give us an actor ref. Um, and this needs a function that takes one argument, which is another actor ref. In fact, you can see the hover over there it says out is an actor ref. So in Akka, the actor refs are, as the name implies, it's a reference to an actor. Turns out you don't actually get to hold actors themselves. You just get references to them. And the way that actors communicate is they send messages back and forth. And you send messages with <clears throat> this, uh, a bang operation. Um, and so inside of here, I need to build an actor. If I go ahead and do that, this should wind up uh, crashing. But I'm also getting an error here. It turns out that we need some more information inside of our controller. And it's fairly easy to add. We're going to add another argument list here. So after the controller components, we want to add an implicit argument list. And there are two things that I want to provide. One, we'll call it system, is the actor system for Akka. That is being used under the hood. Basically, all uh, when you start writing stuff with, with Akka, you need to have a system for it to run in. So we are getting the actor system that this whole play application is running with. And we need something called a materializer. And this is used with Akka streams. And so now we get rid of that error. So having those implicit values gives us this. I actually just want to come into here and put a print line that says getting socket. Okay. Because of this, we know this is going to crash. Okay. This is not going to, uh, to be happy on our server side. But that should print out here in the terminal this is running in. And uh, we should also see that it's getting a socket. And that should happen as soon as the page comes up. So up here, we should have a get. There's actually a whole bunch of stuff that's printing out here that's debug information that we used previously for helping to find errors with stuff. Um, 
So it's saying we had a get and a version main CSS. I am not seeing the call to the WebSocket at this point. Oh, I know why. We wrote a chat.js and we didn't include it in here. Okay, so we have a web page, but we never gave it a script tag. That would do it. So our script source is equal to, and here again, we're going to use reverse routing. So routes.assets.version. And we need it to point to this file down here inside of public. So it is JavaScript slash chat.js. And, and of course, this is all types of confused by the fact that we have Scala code inside of there with quotes. I guess if I had used single quotes for my uh, no, no, that's that's JavaScript HTML. This is just what we're going to have. Uh, note, so this string is a Scala string because of the at, and it is embedded inside of a string for the HTML. So now we come back over here. We refresh this. Okay, nothing printed there. Though there is a part of me, I didn't do a hard refresh. So got the fave icon. Interesting. Okay, well, we'll come back in the next video and we will play with this and figure out why we are not getting, we don't seem to be getting the printout that we're expecting, saying that it requested a, uh, a web socket. And, it, and it's also not crashing. If anything, that's the, it would be easy to miss the printout inside of here, but there should be a big stack trace too because of the three question marks. So we'll come back in the next video and we'll figure out what's going on with that.